Hey guys, in this video I want to talk a little bit about personal finances. As a computer science student, I do not get exposed to finances often. So when I tried to work out my own finances, I was having a really hard time. I found it was really hard to understand all these concepts without many concrete examples. So in this video, I'm going to try and model some of these concepts in individual finances, such as tax bracket calculations, TFSAs and RSPs, or Roth IRAs and 401ks, if you're in the US, and tax deductions and tax credits. So let's get started. The first concept we're going to talk about is the different types of taxes you need to pay as an individual. First, there is the federal tax, which is paid to the country you're living in. For example, Canada, the United States, etc. Next is the provincial tax or state tax, which is paid to the state or province you're living in. For example, Ontario, Quebec, California. Because I live in Toronto, my tax calculations will be based on the Ontario provincial tax rates and the Canada's federal tax rates. The next concept we have is the tax bracket. Many tax systems around the world are constructed using multiple tax brackets, including Canada and the United States. As your income increases, the number of tax brackets you qualify for also increases. Each of these tax brackets has a different tax rate, and usually each subsequent bracket you qualify for has a higher tax rate. Here on the right, we have the Canada federal tax brackets that I took off their website. These are for the year 2020 and may change in the future. The first tax bracket way at the bottom has a capacity of $48,535 and is taxed at 15%. The next one after is $48,534 and is taxed at 20.5%, followed by $53,404 taxed at 26% and so on. Notice the last tax bracket doesn't have a capacity. Usually the last bracket has an unlimited amount of space, meaning any money you put past the previous bracket is taxed at that rate. One thing to note is that these capacities and percentages are magic numbers. Maybe there is research done in order to produce these numbers by the government, but these numbers aren't derived from some formal calculations. So let's write a function that would calculate how much federal tax we need to pay, followed by a function that would calculate how much provincial tax we need to pay. First, we define our function that takes in an income parameter, indicating the annual income we made. Then we define an array of tuples, each representing a tax bracket. The tuples include the capacity of that tax bracket, as well as the percentage it is taxed at. Finally, we have a final tax bracket variable indicating the tax rate on any income left over from the other tax brackets. We loop through each tax bracket, shaving off that amount, and calculating the tax we need to pay for it. When we no longer continue to qualify for the next tax bracket, we break out of our loop. If we still have any income left over, we are subject to the final tax bracket tax rate. And now let's see how much federal tax we would need to pay for $100,000. So it turns out the amount of federal tax we need to pay in Canada for 2020 is $17,991.78. Now let's write a function that would calculate how much provincial or state tax we owe, in my case, Ontario. Again, we start off with our function declaration that takes in the income parameter. Then we're actually going to move all the calculation steps in our previous function for calculating federal tax and move it into a helper function. This function will take in tax brackets, the final tax bracket, and an income. Now we can change our federal tax calculating function and provincial tax calculating functions to both use the helper functions. From this, we can see how similar these tax bracket systems are to each other. Now let's see what our provincial tax would be on $100,000.
and it seems the amount of provincial tax we owe is $7,527.07. So how does TFSAs and Roth IRAs fit into all of this? First, these accounts are what are called tax-sheltered accounts, meaning any assets stored in these accounts are not subject to taxes. The caveat is you must be at least 18 years old to make one, and there is a limit imposed by the government on how much money you can put into these accounts. Each year after the age of 18, you are entitled to additional space inside of your TFSA or Roth IRA, increasing your limit. Any free space you didn't utilize in previous years is carried over to the following years, so you don't have to worry about losing space for not contributing in the past. This annual limit is also a magic number made by the government. On the right, we have the TFSA contribution limit since 2009, and the Roth IRA limit since 1975. Now let's model this as code by writing a function that returns how much contribution limit we have given the year we turned 18. We declare a function that takes in the year we turned 18, then we'll define our array of tuples again. This time, the second value represents the annual contribution limit, and this first value represents when this annual contribution limit ended. We can call each of these a contribution bracket. We set our contribution limit to 0 and year to year 18, and loop over all contribution brackets. Notice how we have an additional contribution bracket for 1975. This is for people who were born before the Roth IRA was introduced, and hence these years have a zero contribution limit assigned to them. For each contribution bracket, if year is less than the contribution bracket year, then we qualify for some contribution at this rate. We subtract our year from the contribution bracket year and multiply it by the annual limit for those years. Then we set our year to the contribution bracket year, for the next contribution bracket. Finally, we return the contribution limit we have available. Now let's calculate how much space we have in our Roth IRA if we turn 18 in 2016. On to 401ks and RRSPs. These function very similar to Roth IRAs and TFSAs. They're both tax sheltered accounts. They both require you to be 18 and they both have a contribution limit imposed by the government that increases each subsequent year. But 401ks and RSPs impact your taxes in a more noticeable way as we'll see in a bit. But first here on the right, we have the 401k contribution limits of each year since 1978. And much like how federal tax and provincial tax are calculated the same, so are 401ks when compared to Roth IRAs and TFSAs. Please note though, I am leaving out some calculations in the 401k such as age 50 catch-up contributions. Again, we're going to have our array of tuples, and again, we're going to move the calculations out of our Roth IRA calculations into a helper function so 401k calculations can use it too. And again, we'll see how much space we have in our 401k if we turn 18 in 2016. Next, we are going back to our tax calculator. As I said before, unlike TFSAs and Roth IRAs, 401ks and RESPs affect the amount of tax you need to pay differently. We're going to add a new variable called annual taxable income and give it the value of annual income. Next, we're going to add two more variables indicating the amount of money we keep and the amount of money in our bank account. With Roth IRAs and TFSAs, you can take money in your bank, put it in a Roth IRA or TFSA to invest in other things such as stocks, bonds, and other securities tax-free. 401ks and RRSPs on the other hand, allows you to invest with your annual income before it is subject to tax. What this means is your reported income will be much lower than the actual income you made, essentially reducing the amount of taxes you need to pay and could even disqualify you for a tax bracket. How does this look as code? Let's take a look. Let's say we contribute the full amount of $19,500 for 2020. 
what would that look like? Well, we would deduct 19500 from our annual income. Then we will continue our tax calculation process. Finally, we can see how much money was deposited in our bank and how much money we kept. We see that even though we have less in our bank, in total we got to keep more of our income and paid less taxes. This is what's called a tax deduction, where you take money off of your annual income in order to pay less taxes. And tax deductions don't always require you to invest in something else in order to lower your taxes. Sometimes that deduction results show up in your bank account. One last thing I want to talk about is something similar to tax deductions, called a tax credit. This is similar to tax deductions in that it allows you to pay less taxes, but it works a bit differently in the calculations. Let's go back to our code. We'll create two new variables indicating the federal tax we receive and the provincial tax we receive. Rather than reducing our annual income to pay less taxes, we just pay less taxes. We can simply subtract the federal tax credit from the federal tax we need to pay and the provincial tax credit from the provincial tax we need to pay. In general, if you had the option between receiving a tax credit and receiving a tax deduction, you should always choose the tax credit. Let's see what happens when we get $1,000 in tax credits versus $1,000 in tax deductions. As you can see, with tax credits, we get to keep $75,481.19 versus $74,852.75, a $628.44 difference. That's all for this video. Hope you guys learned something new. If you guys have any other topics you want me to cover, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.